Hello everyone and welcome to today's War Room episode. We are on, on episode 10 and we're going to be covering BD and BDM all on server 32. So strap in for this absolute cluster mess of open field combat. Welcome back. Yes, we're going to be covering everything in server 32 as well as another server in today's episode. It's a big bonanza trying to cover a load of different PvP. But here we go. We've got BDO and BDM working as one strong line going against DA and DX. And this is basically the ending of the major fight that we did see. But you can see the main strategy being employed by the BDM. They are working together as one giant wall and basically surrounding eventually as an envelope and closing against this DA and DX murder ball. And by doing that, you can see the amount of AOE and single target damage that's being applied to those units there by the DA and DX members, which is the wild deer on screen now by Sunpai. It gets absolutely shredded within seconds. And that means if you are participating in that fight, I'm just gonna say it, you're not gonna get that many deads. You're gonna get so many merits and the trades are gonna be in your favor because so many players are hitting them so quick that he's already lost 30% of his troops before you've even lost 1% of your total troop, right? So really powerful murder ball here. Again, I'm gonna showcase it one last time by BDO. So you can see this line now, all of them going in and targeting that major murder ball by the DA and DX family. And by doing that, this swarm on the top side now by that BDM, you can see with Rip Down in, for example, and Striker right at the top right corner, they are now able to then swarm around again and basically cut off any of the escape routes and swarm you around you completely surrounding you on all fronts. So really good showmanship and really good strategy showcasing the power of server 32 so far, what we've got. And let's go on to the next clip because obviously today is gonna be a jam packed one on open field combat. And welcome back. So instead of server 32, we're now checking out server 33. They're next door neighbors. Yes, the next door neighbors. They hate each other rivalry, but we're going to be watching BXM basically and Anks. And this is a really important thing to see here because you can see Anks using flying units. And the way they're using flying units is to try and cause BXM, as you can see, problems on the ridge. But BXM are playing Star Wars here, guys. They are clearly Obi Wan trying to tell Ant we have the high ground, Anakin. They're telling him because look at this range advantage that these mage players that are located on the very top of the ridge line here they are absolutely raining down blood on the angst members and they have to be paying attention because if these angst guys aren't paying attention as you can imagine they will be targeted and taking free damage and then don't want to be taking free damage because as you can see the way this location is set up now you've got this ramp and this ramp is a very amazing area because the Angst players have to walk into this ramp basically and get towards you. If you're not going to be able to walk along this, it means, you know, other flying units could take the ridge route, which I've showcased here on the blue arrow, and cause a problem. So the main murder ball being the red line needs to go down that red path. And that's because ground units obviously can't go above the ridge line but if you are flying cavalry unit or even just a cavalry unit with blinks and maybe a flying a celestial unit and so on you're able to go over and beyond and take advantage of that so you can see why this bxm positioning makes sense there's a really good positioning from them and it showcases the difference on the strategy again compared to server 32 which was a massive blown out war and where the main fight was in an open field area so he was able to swarm a lot easier as you can see the fight in here is located on a terrain advantage and being having that terrain advantage is key is a strategic position it's allowing you as a player to basically position yourself for the better 
So if you're wondering what they're doing right here, obviously you can imagine they're killing the patrols or the dark creatures so they don't target them by accident during combat. But you can also imagine if they was fighting here, it allows them to charge up their artifacts and use those artifacts immediately onto this murder ball. So here we've got the final part of the EMC. You can see um, EMC again targeted with his Nico and Lilia. And this is what we were talking about. If he wasn't getting, if he wasn't, you know, paying attention and you were AFK, you're gonna get abolished. And that is what happened. And now we're gonna see the trigger. So all the ground units are going up the ramp now by ants and they're having to fight all of the BXM guys on the top of the ramp. All the advantage is in the BXM Alliance right now, guys. But can Anx outpower them with pure AoE damage? You can see a massive amount of AoE damage on that ramp. Beautiful bit of artifact gameplay there. Using Terrifying Inferno, which is the Infernal Flame artifact by Rito there. One of the Lilia players for BXM. But when we look on the Anx side, they're using Divine Mercy to, again, do a bunch of Divine Shredding. You can see Dragon Tamer by the Infantry Unit doing a ton of single target DPS. And again, if that target doesn't die, guys, it continuously deals damage over time. So it allows them to try and punch through. And this is a very tight fight. It's very close. You can see now all of the BXM now moving from AFK towards the front end of that fight and angst are not budging you got elon musk there even with the avias march very very healthy indeed and you can start to see slowly the angst marches dying here and this is what we should imagine i'm not going to say guys you know this is what you know you can't expect but potentially Anx could win. Who knows? We're going to see how this gets played out here. And the reason is, again, depending on the AoE combat. But as we imagined, BXM with the terrain advantage and using that funnel, again, where you can see the bridge where all of those units have to go into a small area, they're going to get punished with all that AoE and artifact damage here. Really valiant attempt, honestly, by Anx taking the fight on a disadvantage to BXM and honestly making it a very great fight indeed. You can obviously check this fight back and re-watch it if you like and see how this fight had progressed again from the start to the end. But we can see BXM now cleaning up house, finishing up the rest of these Anx players from pushing any further, which is honestly a really good push by Anx. They did a lot of work prior to this fight and they've been able to push all the way almost to the main hive of the BXM Alliance. So congratulations to you guys. But I hope you guys have enjoyed it so far for episode 10. We're going to go again on to the next clip. We have more open field combat for you guys on episode 10 to make it a very special one for you to go over and learn some bits about. And here we are at the finale. We have another showcase of terrain. Can we see if DX and NCDX on server 33 push through the BXR family's main chokehold? So here again, you can see how amazingly this looks. You can see all the DX guys located on the, right all the way up on that mountain top, firing different types of open field, you know, range combat to the main murder ball but what you need to keep an eye on is this main ramp that's why i've got it mainly there because that main ramp is what's causing the blockage is anyone from the x going to go up here or are they going to be staying and stagnated on that bridge because as you can imagine guys as you've noticed so far every single episode so far we've been talking about the dead zone and now i'm not trying to draw it i'm trying to make you guys visually start seeing these dead zones and get you guys into thinking more pvp so you can see dx all on this side and on the top is bxr just to clarify for you guys you know you might might not understand that but you've got both sides here these are on server 33 and you can see like I say the flying units all on this ridge line abusing the flanks against the grounded based units 
But again, the thing is with flying units, this is where one of the disadvantages, honestly, I think showcases of the flying type. And that is the flank, right? When you are flanking with flying units like the DX members are doing here, you do get some really, really good open field merits and kills. But you got to remember, you are generally outside the main murder ball. And because you're outside that main murder ball, it means you as a player will not be able to be safe, right? You, you are gonna get targeted very quickly by the opposing main murder ball if they are paying attention. So we'll see if they're gonna be able to do that. But you can see DX now. DX not carrying a single F in the world. They have pushed instantly, guys, up this main wall. They've gone straight up. You can see the lion and they are located on the very top of this ramp. Little Dolphin Jr. using the Madeline and Nika combo there for his infantry causing a massive amount of counter attack damage against all of the other players and Garbonzo now running in with the Bakshi cavalry units and this is an amazing frontline push which now has the supportive advantage from Garbonzo and these other majors that are flying on this western flank here and you can see how well this fight has gone in DX's favour right you can see the difference between Anks where Anks went straight in brute force in which is fine if you have enough firepower to do that but here you've got dx doing through the front door as well as hitting you through the window with the brick as you can imagine with them flying units so i love to see this and this is the combat that we are talking about this is the combat strategy that hopefully you guys have noticed compared to the last clip to this clip the difference in the execution of this same tactic and just like that Look, DX have reclaimed that zone, they've pushed forward, they've taken that zone, and they are pushing forward to kill the BXR Alliance. So I hope you've enjoyed today's episode 10 on the War Room. We've covered as much uh, different PvP on Server 32 and Server 33 as well for you guys all here on the channel. So I hope you've enjoyed it. Smash a like, comment, and subscribe for more daily Call of Dragons content with me, Mr. Sneaky, an official Call of Dragons content creator, trying to teach you guys PvP, hero guides, behemoths, you name it. Anything Call of Dragons, I've got it on the channel. Just have a look in the repertoire because we're already over nearly 500 videos for Call of Dragons. So with all that said, stay safe, stay sneaky, and peace out till the next episode.